Oh, love again. And it's It's time for the wiring. First up, I'm going to do the LEDs. Uh, they're three volts and give off quite a nice purple glow. Like that. So I've got to wire them up in uh, parallel and they're going to be running off two double A size batteries that are going to be tucked away up here. There will be enough room for a graphene panther in there. I can put them in last, but that's what I'm going to do. And I'm doing that because I've got to run the uh, ammo counter off this. I did think about running these in series so they uh, could run off the main battery, but as they're three volts, and I'm going to be using at least four of them, possibly even six, it's a bit, it's a bit dubious as to whether the lipo could actually provide enough voltage. Because as we all know, whoops, let's just check that one. You wire something in series, you double the. Whoops, stay. Okay, the short leg is the negative. Must remember that. God, these things are hard to pin down. Yeah, okay, that works. Let's try that again. I'm going to spread those legs out so it stays in place a little better. Short leg is the negative. Let's try that again. Ooh. Hope you didn't get a shot at the back of my head there. Yep, there we go. <clears throat> so they work. Yeah, if we wire them up in series and I use six, then we need 18 volts. So it's got to be parallel. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I was going to run them off the uh, rev trigger, but then I realised the rev trigger is going to have. A lot of volts going through the switch and it will blow them so it's going to have to be always on and through that so let us begin okay this is going to be the battery there's the negative there's the positive or the ground I should say and uh, let's do this for our LEDs. One, two, three, four, five, three, six. Now I'm going to use green for the ground. Oh, I'm going to need a positive and a negative connection for all of these. So, right, there's the negative, 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 there's the negative. So we have to wire up negative to negative. So what I'm going to do is run one negative off through all of that and then branch off like that. These may even be the, the legs on the LEDs. And then we're going to use pink for the positive, so as our positive terminals. Short leg, just so I remember. And that's going to come down here. And then we can go like that. That should do it. That should be, if you can see that, I mean, yeah, as close to the camera as I can, yep, that's going to be our, our negative um, positive wired in series for the LEDs. That leaves us with the main circuit. That's going to be a two switch, because I don't see the point in three switch systems. I'll get a sharpie for this. 
Remember where I put it. Sharpie. Aha. Sharpie. Right. Because <clears throat> we're using Neo Hellcats, we're going to be using genuine 21 amp on run switches. So, this is going to be quite simple. There's our flywheel cage with positive and negative or whichever way it goes and we've got our pusher motor up here There's a positive and negative we've got the battery boom 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 and we've got our two switches we do not actually need a cycle control switch it's nice to have it but especially with something as fast moving as a a honey badger on the pusher getting the cycle control to work is quite difficult common common normally open normally open that's an O not a C normally closed normally closed now uh, over here in the UK the, the Britain Earth community uses a fairly standardized wiring uh, color wiring for things I haven't got pens in that color so we're gonna go uh, with green again for the negative okay so the negative lead I'm gonna try and do this as schematically as possible so this is our battery connector this is gonna come around here and go to the negative there and it's going to branch off here to the negative side of the motors. Outstanding, nice and simple. Red for the positive. First thing that's going to happen is it's going to go all the way down here to the common on the rev trigger. On the, then from the normally open, it's going to go all the way back here, all the way back here, under that, up to there. That's a fairly standard flywheel wiring diagram for uh, semi-auto apart from this. Now, from the normally open, we're gonna take a feed off here and go to the common there. So, when this switch is depressed, motors will rev and current will flow to there. Now we've got to put some positive uh, current from our trigger switch here up to the uh, pusher motor, yes. Now this I'm going to use blue wire for and I'll mark it in blue because this is actually a variable purpose lead and sort of an accepted standard in the UK that for a variable uh, purpose lead you use blue so you can see it in the wiring. So now D D D D D D D D D D D click D D D D D spin click vroom 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 everything's good everything's fine <coughs> and off we go however we want motor braking and I did say in the the description that we're going to have a quick word about motor braking because we haven't got a cycle control and all the cycle control switch really does is turn the motor on and off depending on the pusher arm position but we don't need that especially as this thing's going to get maybe 15 uh, cycles a second the benefit of a pusher switch is that you always control where the uh, cycle control switch is that generally you control the position of the pusher arm when you stop firing, it generally returns to rest because it will complete the cycle. But at 15 rounds a second, 15 darts a second, even if it's fully extended, you're not going to notice any delay at all. Even if it's fully extended, it will just go, Bleep. you know, so you don't really need it and it's more reliable and it's one less uh, point of failure. So, how do we stop this? Well, <clears throat> we have one more lead to do. And that comes off the normally closed. 
When this is open, the connection is from normally is from the common to the normally closed. And that is a negative feed that comes under here and goes to here. So when the uh, when the main trigger is open, there's a connection there. When the main trigger is open, what happens is instead of the current going boom to the common, then from the normally open. Got that right. No, nope, sorry, I got that wrong. Yep, Duh. this has to go to the normally open, not the common. The variable lead has to come from there to there. So we can ignore this bit. I've done so many rapid strikes, I can do this in my sleep, but talking through it, things get confusing. So, when you pull this, it makes a connection between the normally open and the common, and the current goes boom, 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 into the positive feed. When you release the main trigger, the uh, connection is from the normally closed to the common. And what you have is, and I shall show you, I shall trace this, Remember, you've got all the electrons still flying around in here until you release the trigger. As soon as you do, they go around in a little circle. So we're going D, 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 up there, up there, up there, up there, out, 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 out. And as soon as you release this, you make a path from this connection here to the normally, co normally closed position of the switch and the current goes around like this and that stops the motor almost instantaneously which is what uh, generally happens with the mechanical with the electromechanical locks in blasters that we all remove you know your jam door lock you open your jam door you apply motor brake into the flywheels uh, or the rest of the circuit in this case so there we go uh, I'll go over that one more time we've got one negative lead that goes to the negative on the pusher motor and the negatives on the flywheels and also branches off to the normally closed switch on the trick normally closed terminal on the trigger then we have our positive feed coming down to the rev trigger common coming up from the rev trigger common uh, rev trigger normally open sorry to the flywheels and also to the normally open on the trigger switch you close the trigger the current goes into the uh, blue wire here to the positive terminal on the pusher the pusher does that <coughs> you release the main trigger <coughs> that makes a connection between the common and the normally closed and what you've got is a closed loop like so which means basically the motor is shorting itself out and you get motor braking just a simple way of doing what the cycle control switch does <coughs> and it works and it's simple and it's a lot less bother especially getting everything set up you don't get runaways and you have none of those problems so that's the wiring i am now going to do it i will do the uh leds first i haven't done the uh voltmeter not the voltmeter oh yes yeah the voltmeter there's a voltmeter in here voltmeter positive negative the <coughs> negative is simply going to splice down to that and the positive is going to splice down into that so the voltmeter comes on when you rev the ammo counter I'm just going to rewire I'm just going to basically rewire it the way it was in the chrono barrel so there we go, <coughs> there's our two, uh, I hope you can see that, there's our two, uh, wrong, where are we? Uh, yep, there's our two wiring diagrams, and in case that didn't show up very well, I'll go through it one final time, negative lead, 
up here to the negative on the pusher, splices off to the negatives on the flywheels and the negative on the voltmeter. <coughs> Positive lead to the common on the rev trigger from the normally open back up to the flywheels and the voltmeter and also to the normally open on the trigger switch. From the common to the positive on the pusher, so you pull the trigger, the pusher works. And then from the normally closed, we've got another splice into the main lead, main negative lead here. So when you release the trigger, you get a closed loop and it's all good. I hope you could see that. Right, I'm going to do the wiring <coughs> and then come back and we'll see how it's all worked out. Well, in the end, uh, because the because of the way the rapid strike is constructed, and because we're going to have the barrel and the uh, sensors for the ammo counter in there, I decided the only way to do this sensibly was to have two separate parallel feeds coming off. So that's what I've done. That is the wiring for the LEDs. We've got a positive feed and a negative feed. They're wired in parallel and they will get held down there, probably with just a little dab of hot glue, just to hold them in place finally. Probably. More than likely. We shall see. In any case, this was fiddly as all hell, and all the time I was doing it, I was thinking, oh God, you're going to put too much heat in here and you're going to blow a lead. But, I don't know if I have or not. Let's try. Let's get this wiring through here. Basically, uh, this is going to come out to the the battery box up there, and then you'll just be able to stuff it back in. And uh, hopefully, that'll be uh, that'll be good to go. So now let's see if it works. There we go. Where's the, where's the negative? Where's the negative? There's the positive. Let's see if we can get this to actually light up. Ah. This is the bit that always bugs me. Ah. Right. That's there. Ah. No. Alright, I'm going to have to hold this, so... Aha! There we go. Yeah, I think that's going to work quite well. So now I've got to do the other side. Once I've done that, I shall wire up the... Uh, actual battery box I'm going to use. I have been uh, online looking at various uh, 3S LiPo sizes and they're basically about an inch wide. And Eternity Graphene Panther is 75mm by 27 times by 23. I get that stuck in there. There is going to be room. Unless you can get those from Hobby King. And there's another Turnergy one that's 87 long, but that'll fit in there by 31 wide by 31 high by uh, 25. That'll fit in there. That will fit in there quite nicely. So yeah, that's good. Uh, right, I've got to do the other one now. And then I think it'll be time for a break. Right, uh, 
Okay, I'll get that done. And then get back to the... Uh, Ammo counter. Hooray. I shall get that wired up and we can have a look at it. It, uh, it dawned on me that when I said there were going to be two, uh, two separate sets of, of wiring for the, the LEDs, I might not have been too clear. So this is what we've got. We've got two sets. And also because I haven't got a, a sort of, I don't know what you'd call it, time skip on my video editing software. I can't really show you the, the soldering procedure. This was fiddly as all heck. Uh, I can get a knife. Oh, so what I'm going to do is show you how this will actually fit together. This will be on one side of the rapid strike. This set of leads will be on the other. And they will join together in the battery box. Uh, that's better. And then get fed into the the actual 1.5 volt battery, sorry, 3 volt battery pack. And I'm not going to do that now because that's what's going to be powering the uh, so it's going to be powering the. I keep forgetting what it is. Ammo counter, yes, the ammo counter. So I'm not going to do that until right at the end. But for now, we'll just twist this together. And we can hopefully have a look at how it's gonna, gonna work. See, what I've got here is two parallel feeds off. There we go. So, <clears throat> if I should really get some crocodile clips, but I haven't got any. I do this, and then that. Yay! Leads. That, let me go and take those apart now, is actually the first time I've used leads. So it's very much a case of learning as you go on. Uh, the thin gauge wire is all you need for this because these draw absolutely no current at all. I have no idea what it is. It's micro ohms, micro amps, I would imagine. I even managed to get them lined up pretty close, which is good. I'm pleased with that. That is that. It is now oh, half past five, and I'm going to do the ammo counter tomorrow because I'm dreading it. You can't actually get hold of chrono barrels <laughs> very easily anymore. If I've buggered it up, uh, it's going to be something of a setback to say the least. I don't think I have. It is just wiring. And then finally, the, uh, the actual motors, which will be a lot less stressy than doing this. Great. Off I go to a well-deserved break. Righty-ho, uh, four hours later, and I have actually wired up the ammo counter. I haven't connected the ledge yet because I'm thinking about replacing this with a coin cell holder, but I will do a test it. <sighs> Let me just reconnect this just quickly. Oh, that didn't work, did it? Okay. I should probably just put a blob of solder on here, but I can't be bothered. Let's just twist that together for the moment. Has that worked? No, that's come off. Oh dear. Right. Fortunately, these wires are on the long side. There. Where are we? That 
Let's twist those together for you so we can see if this is going to work. Okay, uh, something to point with. Painting pointing device. So we've got our positive feeds coming up here. We've got the feeds from the IR sensors, which I'm going to have to do a little bit more cutting to fit these in. And then adjust the holes in the barrel to make sure everything gets picked up. So all this runs through here, and as you can see, I've had to do a fair bit of interesting uh, wiring routing to get this to work. The pusher box will sit on top of here. It's quite a tight fit and to uh, put the wiring for the pusher motor in I am going to have to take out some of the material here and for the flywheels I'm going to cut down through here and run the whole caboodle up around here and cover all this up with a uh, sheet of plastic to stop it all coming loose in use. So let's connect this again. Come on. Stay this time. Let's have a look. Let's see if I can do this without getting my head in the frame. Okay, let's switch on. Yay, we have life. Oh, well we did, except the connection came undone again. Ah. There we go. That's working. That shows six. And it's got the FPS reading down at the bottom. So let's try and get this connected and see if the sensors actually work. Okay, I want to test it with a jolt with a spring spacer in. Okay, let's hold that down there and see if it works. Yep, that went down, that ammo counter went down from f 6 to 5 and showed 73 FPS. Try again. Okay. Oh, that bounced off and <laughs> went down two, three. Let's try again. Let's see if I can get this through without hitting anything. Yep, went down to two. Let's run that down. Zero. <sighs> yep, went down to one. <sighs> Got stuck. <sighs> it's always a good idea to test anything before you finalise stuff. <sighs> I'm just bouncing that off at funny angles. See if we can get this through again. Ah, oh, for the love of Mike. Right. To heal with that, let's just hold it. Ah. Ow. Yep, that went down to zero. It's flashing. You're out of ammo. Brilliant. That works. I am so chuffed about that because this was scary. All I've got to do now is make sure that this fits and that the sensors are reading through those holes. They should do because that's where they've been cut. Let's connect that there. Hmm. This might be tricky, but we shall see. Ha! Let's clip that in there. Okay, let's try the jolt again. That's 
still showing zero. Mm. Right, let's back up to six. If these do, if the sensors aren't reading it through here, I'm going to have to <coughs> do a little more cutting and placing on the barrel. Yeah, they're not reading through the holes. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. I'm going to have to do some work on that. However, the important bit is this is all done. So I'm going to tinker with this for a bit and then get on with the main wiring and finally show you what it all comes together and looks like. Don't go away, this is going to be uh, quite nice when it's finished, I hope. Ta da! Finally, we have pretty much finished. Uh, as you can see, I've used a custom switch plate to keep the wiring down here to something sensible and sane because up here it's mental. I am going to have to cover that up and getting this in there was a bloody nightmare. It really wasn't easy. So we shall see. Okay, I'm not going to wire the leads up yet because I am going to wait until the uh, three volt coin battery holder comes in. If this all works, that's on six. Then we should be good to go. Now this is going to test, this is a test only, so I'm using uh, a 7.4 NIM H pack. Okay. Put the shortened trigger in there. And the rev trigger in there, and we shall see what happens. <sighs> yep, that burned out quite nicely. No idea where they went. <clears throat> and did the ammo counter work? Let's see. I took the bloody battery off, didn't I? Duh. Honestly. <sighs> Have to do that again, aren't we? <sighs> Obviously, uh, running on 3S for these are 3S motors, we're going to get a higher FPS, a lot higher FPS, I'd imagine by about 40 at least. And arguably 15 darts a second. Well, we shall see. For now, I'm testing it on this because that's what I've got handy. Let's just get that back on there. That. Back in there. And let's see how we're doing. Okay. Uh oh, we've got a problem. Okay, one of the motors has just got ever so slightly stuck. So. Might help if I kept this in the right place. Ah! 
there. Now then, let's uh, see what we got. Oh, that bounced off. Marvellous. We'll try again. The ammo counter got pushed out of alignment. This is going to seriously have to get pinned, pinned down. Why is that? Aha! That's better. Right. I'm going to have to make sure that everything stays in alignment. The... Uh, Barrel actually rotates under the vibration of the uh, the motor, so that's going to have to get glued into place. However, ah, we won't use those. Okay, that works. And the voltmeter, uh, the ammo counter didn't. Why didn't it? Interesting. Why didn't it? Right, where's that jolt gone? Ah, testing, testing, testing. You put things together, and they work, and then they don't, and you're like, why isn't that working? <sighs> and you find yourself having to troubleshoot things. <sighs> yeah, well that works. Okay, so everything's still working. But it looks... as though the ammo counter is getting pushed out of alignment by the vibration of the uh, Yeah, that worked. That actually registered that. So what I'm going to have to do is glue this in the barrel, uh, the barrel blah, 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 attachment, get everything put down, cover that up, wire in the LEDs, and we're done. That <clears throat> is a job for another day because I've been working on this all day. A lot of which was actually fitting the damned uh, yeah that was getting 126 and this battery isn't even freshly charged so we had 40 to that because those motors are not spinning at their correct speed we are probably talking somewhere in the region of 160 or 170 with the right darts that's good ah uh, Final part of this video is all buttoned up and a nice 18 round mag dump. But that's me finished for the day, so I'm going to go and uh, relax for a bit, lift some weights, finish this off. <sighs> this has taken bloody forever. Okay. As you can see, I've... Uh, added the rapid strike wiring so that's all good I've got a complete mare's nest at the front I mean this is gonna really need a very small lipo in this uh, 
this side of the battery tray. I did try a coin battery holder for the uh, ammo counter, but it just the coins just weren't providing enough uh, juice. It just wasn't functioning properly. On the other hand, we have got our nice little uh, this. So I'm going to have to go back to this, and this will just have to fit. I've got to, I've got to heat shrink those properly. Basically, we're going to have to run the main power lead through here. Just make sure that's not touching the... I'm going to have to put some glue on there, I think, to keep that out of the way. So that will go in there and be connected to the... Oh, actually, I can run that behind that, can't I? Yeah, that'd work. That would help keep everything out of the way. <laughs> Sorry about the light, and I've been doing this all day, and it's really reached the point of absolute fatigue. What's going on here? Why is this doing that? That clear? No, that's rubbing on that. Yeah, oh, go on it. Right, I better sort that out. Okay, I've had to reroute the main positive lead through there to stop it rubbing. That should be okay. Right, so we've got our main lead up here. That'll be running off a standard 3S LiPo. We've got our that's on six, and we can put that up to seven. Can't really see that in the light. Oh, that's too bright for this. But that's on seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12. Okay, you have to take my word for that. Uh, dear, oh dear, oh dear. Yeah, so that's working. This will have to be pushed in alongside there. God, this is going to be tight. And we've got the coin battery out the front, which will sit in here. This is not going to leave us an awful lot of room. Let's just raise that up. That's going to be a tight fit. That is going to be a very tight fit in that. But I think that should be done. You can fit a strife size battery in there. All this will fit in the front. It is going to be tight though, but that's what you get. Okay, so back we go. Five cruddy darts. And now the magazine doesn't want to fit. Do you know, there are days when you do something, why doesn't this want to? Ah, because it's in back to front. I put the darts in back to front. It shows you how familiar I am with loading six dart magazines up, doesn't it? Right. Four, five, six. That goes in there. Connect up our test pack. Standard NIMH in case something has gone horribly wrong somewhere. And there you can see that is on 12. And we fired six darts, and now that's on six. That's cool. Yep. I'm happy with that. All I've got to do now is button it up. Fun, 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 fun. Finished. Uh, well, almost. 
Uh, I've got to put the uh, iron sights on. These are quite nifty ones that I've got an adjustable aperture sight at the back and an adjustable front sight. Uh, and they do this, which is pretty nifty. But I haven't got the right size Allen key yet, so uh, I've got to put those on properly. Uh, we've got a nice little handguard here. And yeah, that's pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. Extended barrel, handguard. Extended mag release. Everything's working reasonably well. Uh, the only thing I've got to do is a little bit of a chip up here from assembly and I don't know if you've noticed I forgot to put the jam door in yay so I've got to finish that off but overall everything works the triggers don't stick I'm pretty pleased with this uh, took my, far far more than the 20 hours I thought uh, I thought it would but overall yeah I've got to take it all apart and uh, put it back together but it works and yeah I never want to do one this complicated again thank you for watching uh, and uh, there we go it's finished a 160 FPS 15 dart second rapid strike with LEDs and an integrated ammo counter yeah yeah not bad <clears throat> okay it is now Oh God, <sighs> small hours of the morning. I've been trying to get this finished all day. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go away now and do something slightly less stressful. Uh, usual just stuff about comments, subscriptions. Oh, and while I remember, the channel's getting really close to 100 now. First 100 subscribers. So I just have to do a quick shout out to everyone who subscribed to the channel or commented. Thank you ever so much. I really appreciate it. In the meantime, take care and I'll hopefully talk to you in another video soon.